service will be starting in just a few moments, but we wanted to jump in and say hi. 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 <laughs> I wasn't prepared. I'm sorry. Okay. Hello, I'm Rudy. And I'm McKenna. And service is going to be starting in just a few moments, but we wanted to jump in and say hi. Yes, welcome. We're so glad that you're here for episode nine of our act series. How have you been liking our act series? We want to know. Go ahead if you're online and let us know in the comments, or if you're here in person, go ahead and write it down on your connection card. Definitely. <laughs> I've been enjoying the act series. How have you been enjoying the act series? I've really been loving the act series. How much have you been enjoying the act series? <laughs> A l this much. A lot. <laughs> Um, no, I've really enjoyed some of the guest speakers. I thought there's some, been some really good guest speakers. Steve's been doing great also with Acts. Acts is so interesting to me, uh, the history of the early church, seeing the things they struggled with, the things they triumphed in. Mm -hmm. um, super interesting. Very cool. Yes. I personally really like the blowtorch that Steve used the other day. Oh yeah, I forgot about the blowtorch. <laughs> I forgot about that. That seemed dangerous, um, but... Uh, right in your face, real life. When I think of danger, I think of Steve Redden. There you go. So, the definition. The definition of danger, Steve Redden, <laughs> with a blowtorch. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Well, we're excited to jump back into Acts, and we hope you are too. Right now we're going to jump into some worship, so we'll say, see you later. See you later. Bye. That's right, everybody. We are getting ready to enter into a time of worship. We are glad that you are here with us, maybe online joining us as well. But wherever you're at, in the house, out there, wherever, we would love for you guys to join us if you're able and standing as we get ready to sing out to God tonight. So if you can stand with us, that'd be awesome. And I'm going to read a scripture to us out of Philippians. This is Paul talking to us in Philippians 1. And in verse 3, he says, Every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. And whenever I pray, I make my request for all of you with joy. For you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now, right? So we're here to celebrate the good news of Jesus Christ. We're here to celebrate the gospel and that story of what God has done through his son in each and every one of our lives. And he goes on to say in verse six, and I am certain that God who began the good work within you, he will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Jesus Christ returns. So we're gonna sing a new song tonight. And it's called My Testimony because we're here gathering as believers or, or maybe we're still seeking to know who Jesus is and wondering about what it means to believe in him. But we're here to give our testimony, the truth of what God has done and what God is doing in our lives, that God indeed will finish that work of salvation that he has started within each and every one of us. So as you get it, let's sing it out together. I saw Satan fall like lightning I saw darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven I believe I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power Still the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven My praise belongs to you forever This is This is my testimony From death to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify By Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony, this is my testimony. All right, come together. Come together, sons and daughters. Bought 
with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son, and Father. Our God will finish what He started. Yes, our God will finish what He started. Oh, this is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. together. If I'm not dead, then you're not done. Here we go. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, then you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not testimony from death to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony oh I'm alive this is my testimony from death to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ This is my testimony. So we build our life upon his love, as our testimony in Christ. Breathe. 
on church, lift up those voices. Hey, welcome back. I'm McKenna. And I'm Rudy. And we're so glad you're joining us, whether that's online or in person. Here at Crosspoint, we are all kinds of people discovering and following Jesus, and we believe that God has a plan and a purpose for you. We hope that you discover more about that plan and purpose while joining us today. That's right. And if you're here for the first time or first-ish time, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, just text CP Welcome to 77411 and uh, we'll tell you a little bit about ourselves and hopefully hear a little bit about you. And there may even be like a free little nifty gift. What? That give <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> you can also text the same number, CP Prayer, and we can pray with you in live time. We love connection here at Crosspoint. One of the ways we do that is by having you fill out that connection card, whether you're here for the first time, you're a hundred and first time, you're eleventy first time, Fill out that connection card because we like hearing from you. We like hearing your questions, your comments, prayer requests, whatever it is. Scan that QR code that should be appearing and that'll take you right there as well. Yes, and if you consider Crosspoint your home, we would love for you to continue to give to us. Your giving is what allows us to be a church that goes here, there, and everywhere. And we provide numerous ways for you to be able to give. You can go ahead and text 77977, go to Crosspoint. You can visit our website, go to crosspoint.com slash give, or even mail in your giving. Speaking of the website, we have all access, which means you can visit us at gotocrosspoint.com and find different information about us, the events coming up, note sheets, messages, you name it. Definitely. One of the events coming up, coming up on June 12th and 13th, that weekend is Compassion Weekend, something that we're excited about. Um, part of that weekend, we're going to have something called the Compassion Journey. Compassion is going to come out and uh, we'll have an interactive uh, walkthrough experience for you and your family. There's going to be refreshments there. If you want to pre-register for that Compassion Journey part of it, um, you can do that on our website as well. That same weekend, there's something else going on. We talked about it last week. Um, we wanted to give you a heads up June 12th and 13th. Crosspoint is going to be just like the rest of California, reopening in a lot of ways. We're going to be inside only once again at full capacity inside. Masks will now be optional, as well as the RSVP for children's ministry will be optional. And we do want to thank you, of course, this whole past year, showing God's love to others through your actions by helping us follow those guidelines and uh, make people feel comfortable as they came to Crosspoint. Definitely. We are so grateful to each and every one of you. Something else that we wanted to bring up was this weekend we are voting on our elder board candidates. Go ahead and take a look at that connection card, fill it out, and make sure that you turn it in by the end of service. Thanks, McKenna. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you, Rudy. You're welcome. Now we're going to be jumping into the Acts series, so don't forget uh, your Bible, your note sheet. Um, we're going to throw it over to the teaching pastor. See you again soon. See you later. Bye. journey journey a little journal with him this is day 9247 of being dumped here at the beautiful gate at some point when it's been 9240 some days. It's just the deal. You're not even angry anymore. You're just like, this is the deal. I don't know where you're at today. And I don't know where you're at in terms of people that you know today. 
But sometimes when it's been 9,248 days, when you've seen God's people walk by you over and over again, shoot, you've been here at this beautiful gate, this temple, and this person that you've heard about, it's in all the blogs, it's in all of the the TikTok accounts, it's everybody's talking and blogging and writing and posting about this Jesus of Nazareth and that he allegedly has all this power to miracles. He has walked by you multiple times and nothing. Oh, you've done miracles for other people, solve other people's problems, other people's situations. Here you are. Find Acts chapter 3 in your Bibles. If you don't have a Bible with you, um, you can get your mobile device out and navigate there in a search engine. Just Acts chapter 3, we use the New Living Translation. Tells us there. Just about starts off one day at church. It's day 9,248. Uh, one day, Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in three o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth. In your Bibles, put, um, put a 4 colon 22. 422 tells you he's been lame for over 40 years. Lame, crippled, paralyzed from birth for 40, over 40 years was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so he could beg from the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, look at us. The lame man looked at them, and in my Bible I have this highlighted and underlined, eagerly expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold. Next two words are very important for you. Peter and John have silver and gold. They're not destitute. They're not poor. They got money. I don't have any silver and gold for you. Not a real nice thing to say to a guy who's crippled and just needs to eat. But just stay in the story. But I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, get up and walk. Then... Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. Point that out in your Bibles. Those of you who take notes in your Bible, and that's super, super important. I've been a Christian for a long time, have heard about this story, have told this story, have spoken on this story, never saw that detail. We're going to get to that in a second. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Then walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with them. All the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. When they realized he was the lame beggar they had seen so often at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. They all rushed out in amazement to Solomon's colonnade where the man was holding tightly to Peter and John. Jesus, today, wherever we find ourselves, God, my prayer is that God, as your church, as one of your kingdom outposts here, you've blessed us, you've given us buildings and resources and all that, God, what we have for our community is not silver and gold and sophisticated, amazing production value kinds of stuff that we do here. God, what we want to see happen here is people encounter this kind of deal here. That in the name of Jesus, stand up. Breakthroughs. Things would happen in people's lives. God, I pray you would encourage our hearts, inspire our hearts with confidence again today. Amen. Uh, for those of you that love to take notes today, I have no fill in the blanks for you. There's probably some things we're going to say. You may want, I may tell you, hey, write this down or whatever. But... Um, this story starts off just one day at church. There's not a big 
miracle crusade going on. There's not like, hey, all the disciples are going to be here. They've done some miracles. Come to church and get your miracle. Get God to do something for you. It's just a day. And it's an afternoon prayer gathering. Back in the Jewish culture, there was the hour of prayer. People would go up to the temple and do a prayer thing and do some religious stuff and walk out and go on back about their business, back about their day. What's happening here in the book of Acts, just because so, those of you that are going to come here and see this happen frequently now, is that there's going to be a moment where something big and dramatic is going to happen, and then the disciples are going to try to explain it, and they get in trouble. And at the beginning, the trouble starts off. We're going to see it here. It starts kind of small. It starts with not even a slap on the hand. It's just, hey, don't do that anymore. And you're going to see now from this chapter into chapters 7, 8, and 9, the whole thing escalates and gets worse and worse and worse to the point where now the Christians are being hunted down, imprisoned, some of them even tortured and killed. That's what's happening, the whole flow of what, we're, what, what, what's, what Luke is recording for us here. As this guy gets there, uh, let's give him a name tonight. So think about it for a second. Give me a name we should call this guy, not just the, the lame man at the temple. What's his name? Bruce. Bruce. Okay. Thank you. Bruce. Bruce is there at the temple, and he's been there since, not probably not since birth, but probably been there figure for 30 plus years, every single day carried there to the temple because, you know, people are going to church, and they're going to feel obligated to help the destitute, help the poor, help people that can't help themselves. And so he's been doing this now every single day now for probably 30-ish years. Think about where you were 30 years ago. Think about it. For some of you, you weren't even born yet. For some of you, you were in your 20s or 30s. And think about this now. Every day now, for the last 30 years, some people came and got you from your house, from where you stayed, from the home, wherever it is, and they carried you on a stretcher, they wheeled you there in a wheelchair and just plopped you down out there. And your whole deal was that people go in there, hey, can you help me? And it maybe had a little sign up, uh, help, help poor Bruce, uh, and, and he had been there, and people were going to find out. People recognize this guy when he's been there for 30 plus years. Um, and Peter says, hey, pay attention. He says, look at us. The reason he does that is because Bruce is asking for some money, and then if he doesn't get money from this person, he's going to go to that person or that person, and there's a lot of distractions going on around him, other options of what he's going to need to get. And Peter and John say, look, if we just pass by you here, if we just throw a couple coins in your cup right here, or if we just move on past you, you're going to miss what God wants to do. So he says, hey, eyes on me. Look right here, he says, pay attention. I, I think that's important because I think there's times that God is looking at each one of us from time to time going, hey, over here, pay attention. You're distracted. Can anybody, if we were more of a charismatic kind of church, there'd be a lot of amens and that's right and preach it. We are a distracted culture. We are distracted with this all the time. I'm amazed, even in 10 years, the ways this can distract me in ways that 10 years ago they hadn't even thought of yet. And I'm not even saying it's bad. It's beautiful. I love all the distractions that are there. Updated scores. I can stream uh, games and watch it. Shoot, some of you right now are probably streaming things on your phone right now in the free internet we're providing for you right here during church because you have certain basketball or baseball teams or soccer or lacrosse or whoever you follow, whoever you're checking on. You can certainly do that. Um, I know all kinds of people sit there and I watch them look down at their phone and go, you're not on your Bible right now. You are, oh gosh, Matt Beatty just scores on an error in the top of the fourth. The Dodgers still trail the, trail the Braves five to four. It'll update you. Peter and John are saying, hey, with all the distractions out there and the culture around us. Look at us. God wants to get your attention because if, you if we just say, hey, we don't have anything for you today and you move on, you're going to miss what God wants to do. He says, hey, eyes on me. Look at us. I, I think that might be something for us to look at today. Not so much as that we've been bad and that these distractions are bad because I don't think they're bad your schooling that you're doing, your work life that you have, your family, all those things are great, beautiful gifts from God, but if we're not careful, we can get so distracted 
with all those things that are out there. And God is over there going, hey, I got something I want to do. I want some breakthrough moments to happen for you here, Bruce, on day 9,248. I know you've been sitting here a long time wondering, is God paying attention? Jesus has walked by me, and not even Jesus cares about me. Today he does. Today he's going to show up, but you've got to pay attention or you're going to miss. And it says that as he does this, the lame man, it says, look at verse 5 there, looked at them eagerly expecting some money. And Peter and John say, hey, we don't have any silver and gold for you. Again, Peter and John had money. These were not, they, they were not super wealthy kind of guys. But what they were saying here is that we don't have any money, so we were out. If we had some, we'd give it to you. They, they, I'm sure they had uh, money they could have come and given to him. They said, look, we have something different for you today. We don't have money for you today. We have something different that God wants. We have not what you think you want, but we have what you need today. Um, and, and, and the mission of the church of Jesus is right here. Our mission as a church is, is, is right here in the subtext of this, is that we are not interested in keeping you comfortable, paralyzed outside the gates. Religion will do that, and well-meaning programs of nonprofit and government institutions are very, very content to just give you a little bit to keep you comfortable and keep you quiet outside the gates. And that's all he wants at this point, because he's just to the point where I'm done, this is my life, I have no hope for anything. Um, he's expecting to get some money. God's about to do the unexpected. You might want to write this down today, it's not going to come up on the screen at all, because I didn't think about it until a few hours ago. So here, here's the deal. Uh, God, in order for God to do the unexpected, we might have to let go of some of our expectations. We want, we want the church, some of us come to church, come to religion, come to spirituality. I want to be made to feel better. I want my marriage to get better. I want my kids to get better. I, want, I just want things to get better in my life. And God goes, hey, what if I had something better for you than just your felt needs and your expectations of what the church and what religion and spirituality should do for me what if there's something so much better than that for me? And even though it feels like I've been at this for a while, I've been coming to church for 9,248 straight days, what if it's on that day that God wants to break through? I think that's our message for you that are here today and those of you that are watching with us whenever and wherever you're watching with us online today in our online gatherings we have some level of financial, I don't know, we're getting by okay. We have comfortable chairs, great sound system, great media people, people in the back filming all this and putting us out there. Guys, the church of Jesus Christ is never gonna reach anybody with high production values. We're not gonna reach anybody just because all of a sudden we get a bunch of money and we can put all of these programs and stuff in place. Well, my dream and hope for us is we can say to our community, look, we don't have much to give you just to meet your felt needs. What we do have is Jesus of Nazareth. And in his name, rise up and walk. We're not, we're not interested in keeping you comfortable in your paralysis, in your dysfunction, in your shrewd up, jacked up marriage and just going, well, you just got to get used to it. No, no. We're not interested in keeping you comfortable in that. We want God to move in and step in there and do something beautiful and amazing and miraculous in your life. Hmm. And this is in verse 7. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, that's when the miracle happened. And I'd never seen this before. This is beautiful, powerful, amazing. Sometimes in situations where you look at people and go, what's wrong with that fool? What's wrong with that idiot? What's wrong with my spouse, my children, uh, somebody in my small group, somebody who's in my van pool, somebody at work? I want, I'm praying for God to do a miracle in their life. You know what God wants you to do? What Peter did for this guy that day. Peter said, rise up and walk, and he didn't go, all right, where's your faith, pal? Let's go. You know what he did? Reach down and put a hand out. Because he wasn't interested in just giving him a hand out. He wanted to give him some help 
up. This is what some people in our community need from us, from the church, from Christians, is to say, look, God has miraculous power available to heal the stuff going on in your life. He absolutely does, but he needs the church. He needs the church to be the body of Christ and to once in a while not just step back and go, what's wrong with those dumb people? Why don't they just trust God? What he sometimes needs is us to come along and go, can I give you a hand? Because you know when the miracle happened? Peter says, rise up and walk. You know when the miracle happened? As the man got up to his feet, bam, all of a sudden, stuff happens. The paralysis, the crippling, whatever affliction, whatever that thing he has, that's when the miracle happened. People sometimes can't trust God on their own, what that means. Some of you recognize this, that you became a Christian because somebody reached out to you and said, hey, just come to this thing and check this out with me. Let me help answer some questions for you. Let me pray for you. Let me help you out with your kids. Let me just put, put your hand out and say, just help them up. Look, that's, there's nothing miraculous in being a helping hand to somebody, but sometimes the helping hand is going to be the pathway to the miraculous happening. If we're just waiting for people to get their act together and just trust God, God, sometimes I'm put you in their life to give them a hand to help them get up on their feet. And we sometimes look at that and just go, man, there's just people that are stuck. I'm looking around here and I know some of your stories. I'm also looking around here and I know that some of you look at people and just go, man, they're just stuck. They're, they're just being carried in one more time. It's just one more day, one more 24 hour, one more week long thing at a job, one more week long thing in a marriage, one more week long thing with with addiction and with hidden sin in my life, and I think, there's no hope for me. I have prayed, I have begged God for this. And what happens is, maybe you want to write this down today. Uh, write down these three words, aggravation, frustration, and then resignation. When you got something going on in your life, and you're, fr and you're just, I hate this, if you're like uh, Bruce here today, Probably for a lot of years, in his teenage years especially, he was angry. There was aggravation there. What, this is not fair. I did nothing wrong here, and I can't walk, and I'm paralyzed, and I see everybody out there playing soccer. I see everybody else out there running around and going to parties and doing all their stuff, and I'm stuck here at a gate begging for enough money just so I can eat something and have a place to sleep tonight. This isn't fair. There'd be aggravation. And then what happens after a while? You get just tired of being angry. You can't be angry anymore, so aggravation gives way to just... Frustration. I'm just frustrated by this. And it's not really that, uh, that kind of anger that's real uh, at, at levels of nine and 10. It's just the frustration of I'm just sick and tired of this. There's no hope. And then you know what happens too? I've sat down in my office. I'm looking around this room even today with some of you. And then frustration just gives way to resignation. What's the point? There's no hope for me. Uh, I've been doing this now for a lot of years. It's just the way it is. People sometimes need to step into their life to say, look, God has a plan for you. God has some help for you. Would you, would you trust me enough? Would you, would you run? Here, here's what you would do sometimes. Some of the people don't have any faith in and of themselves to do this. They, they need to run on your faith for a while. You need to put some faith in their tank to let them stand up and get up and, and walk and experience what God has for them. They're not just going to be able to do it on their own. They need helping hands. And then sometimes, too, we'll, we'll look at people, whether this is you yourself or you know people, and you just kind of think, man, there's just no way. And so we'll write people off. And I don't mean write people off being judgmental. I don't mean being like, oh, they're just jacked up, messed up. There's no hope for them. I'm not saying that. But I've seen some things last now in my life in some people that I know and love and it's been 10, 12, 13 years and at some point you just go, I guess it's just never gonna happen. Here's the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If they're not dead, they're not done. One of you likes that. If they're not dead, they're not done. Done. And if the gospel of Jesus Christ tells us anything, is that that day when they put this, the, the Son of God, the infinite creator of the universe, is laying dead in a tomb, and you think, man, in terms of the universe, the whole thing's going to collapse on itself. What's going to happen here? 
And he came up out of that grave, and the reason that we celebrate Easter here is not that Jesus rose from the dead 2,000 years ago. He's alive today, which means for your children, for the people struggling with gender identity and sexuality, for people struggling with alcoholism, people struggling with, with being self-absorbed and angry and all that kind of stuff, and you're wondering, is there any hope for them? Look, if they're not dead, they're not done. And that means sometimes we've got to recognize our job is to come alongside those people and put our hand out and try to help them, acts of compassion and love. And I want to tell you this today, too. Sometimes putting our hand out is not just a one-time, hey, let's, let's, let's help out one time. Let's buy them some dinner. Let's go get them to counseling. Let's pay for some things like here. Sometimes, I don't, I don't think we did the song this weekend, but there's a song we, we sing here. I think it's by the Elevation Worship Band. You ought to write it down and, and Google it or download it or whatever, called Do It Again. And one... Hmm. The lead line of the song is, walking around these walls, I thought by now they'd fall. <laughs> I know some of your stories. And at some point you go, God, it's been six years, feels like six, six decades of just sick and tired of walking around these walls. When is anything gonna happen here? When is the breakthrough gonna happen? And our deal is we stay with people. We keep saying, look, if they're willing to take our hand and reach out, let's see what God does here. A helping hand. He tells this man, get up, stand up and walk. And he puts a helping hand out to him. Uh, again, there was no miracle there laying on the ground. Nothing happened there until somebody stepped in and helped uh, Bruce up. I wonder today in your life, on behalf of Jesus of Nazareth, who 2,000 years ago started his church and we're one of the kingdom outposts in that church, we're here with a helping hand to say, if you need some help, let us know. Here's the hard part. We are, we are besieged with the four-letter word, uh, the four-letter F word called being fine. Everybody's fine and nobody's fine. I'm telling you right now, I know enough of your stories the ones of you that look all fine and good, you're the worst. Because you've done a great job of making everybody think everything's fine and wonderful and happy. And then I just go sit down with you and go, again, I'm just telling you, COVID re revealed a lot of things to me. The people that I really thought had all their stuff together were the biggest jokes and messes of all of us. Because they've been so good at keeping everything here, like everything's fine, everything's fine, everything's good. And you found out, man, a bit of crisis got in there and exposed some stuff. <laughs> Would you take someone's hand and trust God that he wants to do a miracle today? Would you? Would you? God, guys, here's the deal, too. We, we, some of us are not, don't have obvious signs. I just, this is just revealed to me by God's Spirit today. Some of us have obvious stuff. We know like there's obvious, obvious things like Bruce sitting there at the temple. Everybody knows he's crippled. Some of you are emotionally, uh, mentally crippled and paralyzed in your relationship with God, but we can't see it. You, you look fine and wonderful on the outside. Would you, we're putting our hand out to you to say, hey, would you trust us that God's got something for you? Would you run on our faith for a while, whether you can believe it or not yet? Because it's been 9,248 straight days. Walking around these walls, I thought by now they'd fall. God, I believe I want to see you do it again. Because I know stories of listening to podcasts of people that were in countries where you thought, man, the gospel is just dead and the church is dead. And people prayed for 40 years. A handful of people praying for God to break through, and it was on year 41, where massive revival and a whole mass, massive missions movement that spread out across the planet because people prayed for 40 years. Do the math on that. 40 times 365. I don't even know. It's a lot of days straight to pray together. Would you let us help you up to encounter and experience what God wants to do in your marriage, in your family, with your kids. Would you let us? Or, or you can just put your little cup out and say, would you just give me some resources to help me feel better outside the gates here? Because if I'm going to stay stuck and be paralyzed, at least I could get something to help me feel better. Jesus is not interested in helping you feel better. 
He's interested in helping you get better. Here's the crazy thing. When you get better, you know what happens? You feel better. But all too often, what our culture does, what all kinds of things out there, treats the symptoms, treats the physical outward things out there. It says meet felt needs, felt needs, felt needs. We want to help do some of that. That's what we do by reaching out and helping out. But look, we want to say, look, we don't, that, that's not going to meet your ultimate need here. You need the power of Jesus of Nazareth to step in there and do something that you feel like it was hopeless and helpless. We want to help you up with that. And do you see what happens here? L- look at it here. If you have your own Bible uh, or your mobile device there, it says in verse 8, it says, He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Then walking, and then leaping and praising God, he went to the temple with them. Um, This is going to come as like an earth-shattering insight to some of you today. Before you can leap and jump, you have to get up on your feet. And some of us are, have been in situations where in our marriage, in our personal lives, we've been a, you've been a, a, a hot mess disaster. Physically, maybe not so much, but maybe spiritually, emotionally, mentally. You're paralyzed, you're a mess. You're not going to get up on your feet and start jumping and leaping around. There's a progression that happens here. You've got to learn to stand up. And then what happens is you start to... You've seen little children learn to walk, right? Right? At the beginning, they're just, they have no center of gravity. And so they have to hold on to something. Maybe they're holding on to us for a bit. One step. Here, here's a man who's never walked in his life. He's seen people do this, the coordination and the muscle. And all of a sudden, there's the miracle is that the coordination is all there, the muscle tone is all there. Because you guys have seen people that have been paralyzed and lame and crippled. There's no muscles here at all, really, anymore. And instantly, there's muscles and the ability to coordinate and balance and all that that's going on. It wasn't just that he, boom, he could stand up and walk. The miraculous creation of muscle tissue in his legs. He can stand and walk, and then as he starts to walk around a little bit, he goes, I can walk. And all of a sudden, he goes, I can walk. And then, I'm, you know, he starts to leap and jump and praise God. Go in those stages. Don't get frustrated at the beginning if all you can do is walk. Or all you can do is stand. That's part of the progression uh, that happens in here. He says he was holding tightly to James and John. And it says everybody there was astounded at what had happened here. The reason they're astounded is because this doesn't happen very often. Even back then. It wasn't like Peter and John went to everybody because there was probably hundreds of people out there at the gate. Didn't heal everybody that day. One guy who'd been there for... I've forgotten the numbers now, 9,248 days. He, they're astounded because they said they all recognized this man. They all knew who he was. Um, guys, let me, can I share with you? Yeah, let me just do this. Um, Without going into all the details, uh, several years ago, uh, a man who doesn't go to our church, but who God's really blessed, there may be some, at some point he said, some financial windfall that's going to come to our church, perhaps. I don't know. It's a business thing, and I don't know if it's going to happen or not. But about a month or so ago, I was out here taking a walk out here on Del Rio Road, just asking God and praying about that. And I said, God, by God, here's the deal. If it comes down to a choice between a million dollars windfall for Cross Point Church or an outbreak, a fresh outbreak of the wisdom and the power of God, keep the money. Keep the man, I'm telling you right now, God, I, what I want to see here is for us to be able to tell the, tell the community of this inland valley out here, we don't have a lot of silver and gold for you. What we do have is the power of Christ to absolutely change and revolutionize and transform your life and do miraculous kinds of things here. There's a fascinating story by a guy about a guy named um, Thomas Aquinas. Those of you who paid attention in history and philosophy and religion, uh, he was in the 1200s. He was having a conversation one day with, at that point, the Pope in the Catholic Church. And the Pope, in commenting on this story right here, he said, hey, Thomas, no longer do we, as a church, no longer do we have to say, silver and gold, have we none? Because at that point, the church is 
wealthy beyond, you know, amazing. You've been, if you've been to the Vatican and seen the stuff that's, I mean, the church is wealthy. He says, no longer do we have to say silver and gold, have we none? And Thomas Aquinas looked at him and said, but neither do we get to say, rise up and walk. I'm telling you right now, if it comes down to it, guys, I'd rather have the fresh outpouring of the Spirit of God. I, would, I think everybody here would go, God, I, I would rather see that than all the crazy windfalls of crazy money and crazy sophisticated technology, all this stuff. And look, all things being equal, what I told God that day too was, so like Solomon, if you want to do both, I'm okay with that too. Fresh wisdom, fresh power, fresh outbreak of the Spirit of God and the money too, we'll take it all. But if it comes down to it, God, I'd rather have your wisdom and your power there. And then the guy, he's all excited. The people are all astounded. It says there on your note, she lets jump. He is, he is excited about this. But here's the message for some of us today. Once you get up, stay up. I've been doing church work as my profession now for, I think, about 30 years. And here's what I've seen happen from time to time. God delivers people in their marriages, in their personal lives, does amazing, beautiful, just spectacular things. People that were spiritually, mentally, physically paralyzed in their emotions, in their heart, in their spirit. God delivers them from that addiction, delivers them from the disaster where they were. And you turn around one day and go, a year later, and go, what are you doing sitting out here at the gate again begging? You know why? Because I know how to do that. I don't know how to be free. That's why Paul frequently in the book of Romans says, hey, it's for freedom that you've been set free, so keep walking in your freedom. Don't go back there to sitting, go, go back to what you're familiar with. And that can be really difficult because the first few steps in jumping around the temple and praising God, you know what Bruce has to do now? Go get a job. He doesn't get to sit there and go, please, could I have some money? He's got to go do some things now. God set him free for a new life. And sometimes the new life can be challenging and difficult. Man, once God has delivered you, Stay up. I wonder too, um, again, I, I love to see it here at Cross Point where I see uh, when we do baptisms here, when I see people become Christians here, we see breakthrough moments at camps and we see things happen here. You guys get geeked out and excited about that. It's, it's not like, oh cool, somebody got baptized. We don't do that here. It's not how we roll here. I love seeing that here. I love to see God break out some more of that and see some people become Christians, see people delivered, and watch us go, man, there is no way that was possible. And look what God did here. Something astounding happened here in our church. And then this is a beautiful, amazing picture of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because all of us are just like Bruce. We, we are the sin and our brokenness has paralyzed us, and we are outside the temple, and we can't get in, and we're just stuck out there, and all we're doing is go, I just need a little bit of money just to get by, and that's what, that's what religion does. Religion will give you just enough to get by. Jesus comes along and says, I got something better for you, and he takes this man. Do you see where this guy starts? He starts outside the temple. Guess where the story ends? He's now inside, because he's been set free, he can walk, he can leap, he can jump. This is what the gospel does for us, is it takes us paralyzed in our sin and, and doesn't just give us some crutches, miraculously gets us up on our feet and we learn to walk. And then we learn to jump and run. So as the band comes up right now, some questions here for you. And, and don't put your notes away because we're, we're just about done, but stay here for a second. Where does God need to get your attention today? What are the distractions where Jesus might be going, hey, I'm trying to, hey, over here, look at me. And we're just distracted. Maybe it's time to minimize some of those distractions. Maybe it's time to say, okay, God, get my attention. I, I want to see you. Where does God need to get my attention? And then where do we need to pay attention? We are an outpost in the kingdom of God. scattered all around our neighborhoods, schools, shoot, even right here 
at our church are people that are sitting there paralyzed and they don't look like it because everything looks fine on the outside. God wants to do something miraculous and beautiful in their lives. Who needs my help? Who does God want to put in my life to say, look, I don't have a miracle for you. What I want to say to you is in the name of Jesus, get up and walk and I'll give you a hand. Who are those people? The second we as a church stop doing that, we've lost the whole mission of why we're here. Because God has deployed us out here into a world full of spiritually, mentally, sometimes even physically or emotionally paralyzed people. He says, look, you've got the gospel. You've got the spirit of God within you. Walk into those situations with the confidence and the faith to say, silver and gold for you we don't have. What we do have in the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk and let me help you. Get up on your feet. Give you a chance to let this sit in and seek into your heart for a bit here. Uh, our band's going to sing some songs here to let this soak in and sink in. Uh, in the four corners of the room, in the back two corners and the corners up here, are the elements of communion. It's a piece of bread in a little container with some juice in the bottom of that container. The reason we do communion every week is to keep us focused on Jesus. To say, look, we are not saying in the name of Cross Point Church, get up and walk. In the name of our pastor, in the name of the transformation is possible, just him here, our amazing band and our amazing pastor. That's not going to do it. What's going to do it is the Spirit of God moving. So it's going to happen because Jesus steps in here and we are, we are so perplexed and so mesmerized, not just with God in general, but with Jesus in particular, who is the perfect Son of God. Then they walk out into situations going, look, I don't have anything to give you but Jesus. And that doesn't come out of some religious obligation to say that. That comes out of a sense of confidence because we know him. We've experienced him and communion helps us remember the cross that makes transformation, makes deliverance and freedom possible. So Jesus, today, here in this place, we say to you, hmm, God, I don't know what we say to you, actually. But I believe you have something to say to us. So right here, right now, whether we're here in the house, whether we're on a couch or an office or in a car driving, God, speak. Whatever you want to say to us right here, right now, we are listening. the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope, who could imagine? So great a mercy, what heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus.
Jesus Christ, my living hope. Oh, hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ. the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declare the grave has no claim on me then came the morning that seal the promise your very body began to break out of the silence the roaring lion declared the rain has no claim on me oh jesus yours
pray for you. So if you got stuff that you're dealing with, maybe it's crisis kind of stuff and maybe it's just, I'm sick and tired of being paralyzed. <laughs> just tired of it. It's been 9,248 days. I'm, I'm tired of this. Don't be resigned to this just the way it is. Let somebody help you out. Let somebody pray with you about that today. And as you leave today, 
Say hi to somebody here in the house who maybe you don't know yet. Find out anything you want about him. I have no good creative thing to ask you to find out about him. Uh, thanks for coming out today. Thanks for joining us online. We'll see you guys next weekend. Have a good one.